All right, today we're going to be talking about what shapes an ecosystem. And <laughs> I just love this picture of this kid just <laughs> being attacked by a cat. All right, so our objective for today is to explain how biotic and abiotic factors influence biodiversity in an ecosystem. So ecosystems are influenced by a combination of both biological and physical factors. Biological and physical factors. Raise your hand and tell me an example of an abiotic or physical factor. Emma. Rocks, okay. The weather, yes. How much temp? What's the temperature? How much precipitation? Okay. Non-living things. The biological influences on organisms within an ecosystem are called the biotic facts, factors, right? Biotic factors include all the living things with which an organism might interact. So, what eats that animal? What does the animal eat? Okay, is there competition between two different animals for the same water, okay, or for the same food? or non-living factors that shape ecosystems are called abiotic factors, okay? Here is a longer list of abiotic factors, okay? Temperature, precipitation, humidity, how much water is in the air, right? Wind, nutrient availability, so is it good soil or is it crappy soil, right? Soil type, is it sandy, is it made of clay, is it have lots of earthworms, no earthworms, okay, and the amount of sunlight. Okay, so how do biotic and abiotic factors influence an ecosystem? So these factors determine the survival and the growth of an organism and the productivity of the ecosystem in which the organism lives. Determine the survival and growth. The area where an organism lives is called its habitat. A habitat includes both the biotic and abiotic factors. A niche is a full range of physical and biological conditions in which an organism lives and the way in which the organism uses those conditions, right? We've talked about this a couple times now. It was on the reading guide homework where you had to draw the tree and say where the warbler, they all live in the same tree, but some live in a nest at the top. Some live in a hole in the trunk of the tree. So... So here's our example, like I was talking about, okay? The one type of warbler lives at the top, another one's in the middle, and then there's a one that lives at the very bottom, so those are different niches in the same habitat. So the range of temperatures that an organism needs to survive and its place in the food web are part of its niche. So 
the combination of biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem often determines the number of different niches in that ecosystem. It's like too high on the board. So it says no two species can share the same niche. No two species can share the same niche in the same habitat. Okay? Different species can occupy niches that are very similar, but if two things are living in the same niche, then they're going to fight over it and one of them's going to be chased out or killed, okay? So what interactions occur within communities? So community interactions such as competition, predation, and various forms of symbiosis can affect an ecosystem. So those are the different types of interactions we'll be talking about. So community interaction number one is competition. You need me to go back? Yeah. Okay, so the first type of community interaction we're talking about is competition. Competition occurs when organisms of the same or different species attempt to use an ecological resource in the same place at the same time. So the easiest one to think of usually is the watering hole, right? Like, how many of you saw the Jungle Book? The newer one where they all go to the watering hole, right? And it's like very, everyone has to be on their best behavior and whatever because all of those animals, regardless of who's the predator and who's the prey, they all need water, right? So that's a competition for water. A resource is any necessity of life, such as water, nutrients, light, food, or space. So we know that apes and monkeys are definitely very territorial, right? So they will fight each other for space. And once that's their space, you do not come in that space or you may die. Okay? Direct competition in nature often results in a winner and loser, with a losing organism being dead, failing to survive. The competitive exclusion principle states that no two species can occupy the same niche in the same habitat at the same time because it's just too much direct competition. So somebody will win out and the other one will probably go and die. The distribution of these warblers avoids direct competition because they are in different areas, right? So each species feeds in a different part of the tree so they're not bothered by the other warblers in the tree. This is kind of like if they only had one lunch cart for the entire school. That would suck, right? That'd be like the longest line ever, and the weaklings would die. <laughs> Class size reduction. <laughs> Are we good? So the second type of interaction is predation. Okay, an organism in or excuse me, an organism, an interaction in which one organism captures and feeds on the other organism is called predation. Predator prey. The organism that does the killing and the eating is the predator, and the organism that's getting eaten is called the prey.
The next one is symbiosis. Okay, any relationship in which two species live closely together is called symbiosis. Symbiotic relationships include mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Dun, dun, dun. So mutualism is where both species benefit. So they both get something good out of it, right? The clownfish and the sea anemone thing. Anyone know how that one works from Finding Nemo? No? The clownfish, like, feeds off of all the waste product in the anemone, but it also gets protection by doing that because it doesn't get electrocuted by the anemone like everything else does. So they both benefit. Commensalism is where one member of the association benefits and the other is neither helped nor harmed. So those barnacles growing on the whale, they get to go all about and feed through different areas. It doesn't hurt the whale. The whale doesn't even know it's probably there. So that's commensalism. Good? And parasitism is everyone's disgusting favorite. One organism lives on or inside another organism and harms it. Okay? So, there are some birds that lay their eggs in another one's nest. So, you can see that speckled one is a different egg, and it grows faster. So, the mom's trying to take care of all of her eggs, right? But that one's in there, too. That egg hatches first and then eats all the other eggs. <laughs> it's mean, huh? <laughs> Obviously, those are all eggs living in, uh, on that and feeding on that caterpillar, which is pretty nasty. And a tick, right? If you get a tick on you, it feeds on your blood. Oh, I'm not supposed to show you the answer yet. All right. <laughs> which of the following is a biotic factor in the bullfrog's niche? No, that's not even right, though. Biotic factor, what should it be? Good. A heron is a type of bird, okay? Is water living? Is climate living? Is day length living? No. So the only other one that's living is a heron, okay? An organism's niche is different from its habitat because the niche does not include the place where the organism lives. The niche includes all the conditions under which the organism lives. The niche only includes abiotic, or the niche only includes biotic? The answer is B. Includes all the conditions, both abiotic and biotic, right? The attempt by organisms of the same or different species to use a resource at the same time in the same place is called what? A. Good, A, competition. An association between two species in which one species benefits and the other one is neither harmed nor helped is called? Good. C. Commensalism. When a volcano erupts and completely destroys an ecosystem, the first species to populate the area is usually? B as in boy. Pioneers such as lichen. Right? That was on yesterday's worksheet if you finished that. All right, so now, guess what I have for you? Another practice sheet, woo!